Hello! Is your combination boiler coming on when you're expecting it to be off? Or maybe essential heating is coming on again when it should be off? But in this video, I'm going to go through all the reasons which I find combination boilers will be coming on when you're expecting them to be off. So this video is for combination boilers only. If you have a heat only boiler where you have that large hot water tank, then I've made a separate video all about the reasons why a heat only boiler may be staying on when it should be off. And of course, you can find that video in the cards above now or down in the description. So I'm going to go through some operational reasons why your boiler may be staying running. And those would just be a simple adjustment on your controls on your boiler. Then there's some fault reasons why your heating may be coming on and some fault conditions in your boiler, which would bring your heating on. And I'll go through those with you as well. And if you want to go a little bit more in depth, then there's some electrical wiring information as well. After I've gone through all the reasons why your boiler may be staying on or it should be off, I'll then sum it all up with some simple steps and checks which you can do to find out why your boiler may be staying running. I'll also give you a little bit more information about how your boiler operates so it'll give you a better understanding of what may be going on. Before I get on with it, let me just quickly mention one of my other videos, 10 energy saving tips, which you can do to make your system more efficient, which is going to reduce your gas bill. And you can find that link in the cards above now. And of course, down in the description. So why is your combination boiler running when it should be turned off? Now here's a couple of quick reasons why a boiler may be running when you're expecting it to be off. The first of which is when you turn your central heating or your hot water off, you'll hear your boiler continue to run for about a minute to five minutes afterwards. Now this is perfectly normal and it's just the boiler keeping the pump on. For the central heating, it's just going to keep the pump running so it pumps that last bit of heat out of the boiler and into your system, just keeping it nice and efficient. The hot water keeps the pump running just to circulate the last bit of heat around the boiler to reduce the chance of scale buildup and stop any hot spots. All perfectly normal. Another reason, if your boiler is installed in an outhouse, the garage, in a loft, anywhere where it gets really cold, most modern boilers have a frost thermostat inside them. And there's a possibility that the boiler is getting really cold and the frost thermostat inside the boiler is coming on and it's warming up the boiler and it's bringing on the central heating because the boiler is getting really cold. So if your frost thermostat is kicking in, there's not a lot you can do about that. If you switch your boiler off, you're running a danger that something's going to freeze in your boiler and then you may get hundreds of pounds worth of damage to it. So don't turn it off. And personally, I never recommend installing a boiler anywhere when it gets really cold for these types of reasons. Right, now let's deal with the most common reason which I find a combination boiler would be running when it should be turned off. Now the first thing I'm going to ask is when you say your combination boiler is running, do you mean that the boiler is running but nothing is turned on? So all your taps are turned off, you haven't got your central heating turned on and it's not getting hot and yet every now and again you hear the boiler come on, it runs for about 5 minutes and then turns off again. If this is what's happening to your boiler then you can almost be certain that it's going to be a setting on your boiler to keep it hot all the time. Now different manufacturers have different names for this setting. So ideal call it preheat, valiant call it comfort or warm start, Worcester call it eco, glowworm call it eco, but they all do the same thing. Now this setting is only to do with your hot water. And the idea is that the boiler will keep itself hot around 50 or 60 degrees. And then when you turn your hot tap on, the boiler is preheated so it doesn't take very long for the hot water to come out of the tap. And that is all the setting is for. But this also means that your boiler is going to be firing up during the day and during the night when you're not using the boiler, keeping itself pre-warmed, just waiting for you to turn the hot tap on. Now, if you turn this setting off, you will notice that it takes a little bit longer for your hot water to come out of the tap, maybe around 15 or 30 seconds. But now your ball is no longer firing up during the day and night when you're not using it, saving you gas and additional wear on your boiler. And it's worth knowing that if you're most likely to use your hot water when you've got your central heating on, then this is just like having preheat already turned on because your boiler is already hot running your central heating. So your hot water will come through nice and quickly whenever your central heating is on. Now this setting could be useful if you're on a water meter or maybe if your boiler is in an outhouse or in a garage or loft. 
But if it is in an outhouse or somewhere where it's very cold, then it's going to be coming on even more, keeping itself preheated, using even more gas. Now, every manufacturer has a different way of turning on and off this preheat setting. If it's not obvious on the boiler display, then you may need to check your instructions. And even then, sometimes it's not in the instructions and I've had to phone up manufacturers to find out how you turn the setting on and off. If you're not sure how to turn that preheat setting on and off on your boiler, then I have made some videos on different boilers on how you turn this setting on and off. And you can find those in the description below. Right, moving on then. So is your central heating running so your radius is getting hot when they should be off? Now this could be down to several reasons. So the first thing I'm going to check for is do you have a heat control telling the heating to come on? So I check the timer on the front of the boiler. If you've got one of those, make sure that says off. I find the room thermostat and make sure that's turned down if you've got one. If you've got a separate programmer or a wireless control of any description, I check that that is definitely turned off. Now with any wireless controller, you're also going to have a receiver unit and that's either going to be in the boiler or it's going to be a small unit next to the boiler. So I then find that receiver unit and check that it's definitely turned off because sometimes at these receiver units, they lose their connection with the programmer and then it may be saying off on the programmer, but the receiver unit is actually still turned on telling your central heating to come on or it may have become faulty and it's still turned on. So quite often there's a override button or there's a switch on the front of these receiver units and I'd switch that switch or press that button to see if it turns the central heating on and off on the boiler. If it's working correctly, you would normally hear a click come from the relay box as it switches on and off. Now quite often there's a light on the front of the receiver unit also and whenever the heating is on, that little green light is turned on. Again, you can't rely on that because sometimes the light is off, but the unit is stuck and it will be actually telling the heating to come on. Now, if I think that this receiver unit isn't working correctly and maybe it is faulty, I then look to disconnect it. Obviously, that means you're going to need to start taking things apart. And if you don't want to take things apart, then I strongly recommend you call a gas registered engineer. Now, depending what receiver unit you have, like this Honeywell T3R, it's very easy to just undo the screw and remove the receiver unit. A word of caution, most of these receiver units run on 230 volts. So these connections will now be live and that voltage can kill you. So only do this if you know exactly what you're doing. Now, these receiver boxes are pretty much all the same. You have a live neutral on earth and then we have two switch wires. So these two wires are just a simple switch. When the heating is on, they're linked together by the relay box. And when the heating is off, the link is broken. So a simple test is just to remove one of the wires and that should turn your heating off. Before I go through some other reasons why a combination boiler may be staying running, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful at all, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on that subscribe if you like the video, click on the bell if you want to receive a notification and of course share the video with your friends. A big thank you to everyone who has thanked me by getting me a cup of coffee and leaving a donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Oh, and don't forget to check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. Now, if when I remove the receiver unit, the boiler central heating turns off. And if when I put it back on, the heating comes back on again, then that pretty much indicates that there is something wrong with the receiver unit if it should be off. Now, if you find that your receiver unit is faulty, then there's not a lot you can do about it. It's just a case of replacing it for a new one. And of course, if you want to know how to go about doing that, I've made a detailed video all about how to install and operate the Honeywell T3R. Now, if you're definitely sure that all your programmers and timers and room thermostats are all working correctly and they're definitely turned off and yet your central heating is still getting hot. Now, if you've noticed that the heating only comes on when you put your hot water on, then that is almost certainly going to be down to the diverter valve in your boiler. 
This valve switches from hot water to central heating. And if it becomes faulty and maybe sticking, you're going to find your central heating coming on with the water. And then all that can be done then is to replace that diverter valve. Another reason why your central heating may be coming on when you got it turned off is to do with your preheat setting and if you have a faulty diverter valve. What can happen then is if that preheat setting is turned on so the boiler is trying to keep itself pre-warmed for your hot water but your diverter valve is sticking then that water which should be heating up just your boiler is going to start going around your central heating and bringing that central heating on. Once again, if that's the case and the diverter valve is sticking or in the wrong position, then all you can do is to get a gas registered engineer to replace your diverter valve. And one last thing I would be checking for is if you have additional controls. Now on this combination boiler here, you'll see that it has a three port motorized valve. And this valve is used to divert the water to heat up a hot tub. I've also seen them used to heat conservatories and underfloor heating. And if you do have additional controls, you want to check those also to make sure that they are not keeping your boiler on. I thought I'd just add this point, which I found once, but it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have this. And that is that you have a hot tap running somewhere, which would keep your boiler running. Now this wrong property I visited, the boiler kept coming on saying the hot water was running. Obviously no hot taps were turned on, but it turned out they had a leak under the floor downstairs and it had that much water leaking out of it, it was actually bringing the boiler on. Like I said, that is pretty unlikely and I've only seen it once in 30 years. And finally, the wiring in your boiler. Now every manufacturer has their own way of wiring their boilers. But thankfully, combination boilers are usually fairly straightforward. You have a live, neutral and an earth, and then switch wires which are used to control your room thermostat, timer or programmer. Now these two wires are normally just a basic switch. Link them together and it brings your heating on. Break the link and it turns your heating off. So a simple test is just to remove one of the switch wires which would turn the heating off. Boilers are getting a little bit more complicated now where you have this OT connection which stands for open therm. Or on this boiler it's the bus connection which is for more advanced controls which controls the boiler output. The other thing we need to watch out for is whether our switch controls are running on low voltage or running on high voltage. If you get these wires wrong, then you could end up blowing your circuit board and a new circuit board is going to cost around £200 or more. So I would advise not to go messing about inside your boiler unless you are a qualified engineer. And one other very important point is that a lot of modern boilers like the Valiant boiler to get to any of the electrics you need to remove the front cover of your boiler. This then gives you access to the gas valve and burner and removing the front cover will affect how they operate. So only qualified gas engineers should be removing covers of boilers. So summing up why a combination boiler may be running when it should be off. So if your boiler is somewhere where it's really cold in the garage up and off then your frost protection on the boiler could be kicking in and bringing the boiler on when the temperature gets down to around about five degrees and if that's happening there's not a lot you can do about it now the most common reason i find for a combination board to be running when it should be off is that preheat setting now the way you can check if you have preheat turned on or off on your boiler is just to look on the display on your boiler and see if you can see a preheat setting and just see if it says on or off now, if there's nothing on the front of the boiler to indicate whether preheat is turned on or off, the way to check is just to don't use your boiler. So don't use your hot water, don't use your central heating for about four hours, and then come back to your boiler and see if it's still hot. If it's still around about 50 degrees four hours later, then you can pretty much guarantee that you have preheat turned on on your boiler. So you may need to find your boiler instructions and find out how to turn that preheat setting on and off. If you don't have any instructions, then pretty much all instructions are online these days. So just look at what your boiler is and then download the instructions from there. So moving on to your central heating, if that's coming on, the first thing you want to check is all of your controls. Make sure that everything is turned off. I do come across it a lot these days where someone's made an error, especially with these digital controls, and then that's bringing the heating on. So make sure that your central heating controls are definitely turned off. And finally, a little bit of information about how your combination boiler works. 
Now you may not realize that when you use your hot water and your central heating, only one thing operates at a time on a combination boiler. So if you have them both on, so you have the central heating on and you have your hot water on, only your hot water will be working. Your central heating will then be off because the boiler can only do one thing at a time. And that's either hot water or central heating. And hot water will always take priority over your heating. So if someone takes a really long shower for an hour, your central heating is going to be off for that hour whilst they use the hot water. Another useful thing to know about combination boilers is if your hot water is working, there's not much reason why your central heating shouldn't be working. Because pretty much exactly the same things run when you use your hot water or your central heating. The only difference is, is there's a diverter valve inside the boiler which switches the heat from either heating up your hot water or it heats up your heating. So if you're not getting any central heating, then it's pretty much going to be down to the diverter valve is not operating properly. And that's also the same if your central heating is working, but your hot water is not working. Then again, it's pretty much going to be down to the diverter valve not working properly. After that, it's then pretty much down to fault diagnosis, just working out why your central heating or your boiler is running when it should be off. So I hope that's all giving you a better understanding of what's going on inside your combination boiler. So that's about it then. So if you want to watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And there's always my toolbox fund. Bye for now. And I'll see you next time.